Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful sunny day here at Sedgwick County Zoo. I'm Shanae. Thank you for joining us so much on another edition of SCZ Live. Now today we're going to talk a little trash or hopefully a little conversation about lack of trash. We are back behind the scenes here at Sedgwick County Zoo and wanted to focus a little bit today on how we try and recycle and compost and reduce, reuse, recycle as much as we possibly can. Now this was brought up to me because earlier this week I was talking with my father-in-law who happens to live in a smaller town here in Kansas. Um, he was an avid recycler, was, recycled everything, had his own compost pile, everything else. And sadly his community is no longer recycling. Um, so now He's saving it for us, and when we come to visit, uh, he will give us his recycling, and we'll bring it back to Wichita. But it got me to thinking that it might be fun to share what we do here at Sedgwick County Zoo as far as reducing, reusing, recycling. And I'm here today at our compost piles. Um, and if we turn the green around here, you can see this is where the zoo will bring all of its compost and plant waste areas. So one of the first things we try and do is not bring things to the trash bins right off the bat. A lot of the things that we have um, around the zoo can either be composted or can be disposed of in a way that maybe uh, will be more natural and be able to decompose a little bit quicker. Now we haul about three tons of compost out of Sedgwick County Zoo a year. Um, elephants alone can produce up to about uh, 2,000 pounds of compost, compost every day. I guess you could say compoop as far as the elephants go. And if I look right over the edge here you can see that our compost can actually help native wildlife as well. We have a, a resident mallard duck there that is enjoying the compost in here. So the compost is picked up twice a week and we can put anything in here that's easily broken down. Um, our general rule here at Sedgwick County Zoo is if it's bigger, if it's a stick bigger than your pinky, it can't go in compost. Instead, it will go into the limb dumpster, which is right next to it. So if you're a zookeeper or maintenance or horticulture here at the zoo, you have to make that decision as to whether you bring your product to compost, um, which is here. Again, I find it funny that the duck is joining us today. Um, or you can take it over to our plant waste section, which is right over here. This is the stuff that's really too big to compost easily, um, so it generally has to be broken down into different fashion. Now, as I mentioned, we're back of house here at the zoo, um, and this area as well, all in here, is our repurposing area. So anytime we have different products, different materials that maybe can be rehoused somewhere else at a different time, we put it back here in this area. You can see a couple of our maintenance workers, our maintenance guys over there that are going through, and that is our uh, dumpster that we use for those products that just can't be used anywhere else. And even here, you can see they're going through and looking and seeing if any of this has another life. Can we use it somewhere else? Now off to the side here you might see these, this orange uh, recycling bin. That's where we could put any of our metal. So if any of you have ever recycled aluminum cans or anything else, you know that uh, you can bring in some profits. So we recycle our metal here and then the money we raise from that will go back to helping our other recycling projects that we have here at the zoo. So we recycle metal, we have our construction dumpster where we have things that are, are big and uh, need to go into a different site. We have that limb dumpster for those things that are too big to be composted. And then of course, again, we have that compost dumpster that's right over here. Now this is for all of those solid waste materials. And again, duck still enjoying the time immensely. Oh, there she is. So this is a pretty smart duck, I think. There's a second duck I can hear over there somewhere. So one of the things, however, you can do is it's easy to compost at your own house. Um, we have, for example, just an outdoor compost bin that we can use year-round. Uh, and remember, with composting, the, the, the goal is make sure you have equal amounts of greens and browns. Uh, fresh grasses as well as small plants, shrubs, materials like that that allows it to be able to be broken down. But you can also do this on a smaller level. Right here are some of the most amazing worms ever. These are the red wiggler worms and we have some gigantic fat red, red wiggler worms there. Now red wigglers are different than earthworms where earthworms do a great job of going down into the soil and aerating the soil for us and keeping our soil healthier, red wigglers will live on the top 
of the soil layer. So they'll live in the leaf matter um, and, not, and don't dig burrows down into the soil itself. So the red wigglers are composters. You can take a small bin just like this, although if it was a permanent bin I would recommend it being dark in color, drill some holes on the sides, um, and then go ahead and purchase some red wigglers. You can buy them at Amazon. And keep this, say, underneath your kitchen cabinet, uh, underneath your sink. Then when you have a small amount of produce, maybe those orange peels or a few green beans that are left over. Um, you can put those those leftovers in your compost bin here with the red wigglers and the red wigglers will make easy work of all that. Um, you have to make sure though again same thing not too much they don't eat a whole lot so you need to limit uh, the amount of compost you'll put in depending on the size of what uh, your bin is. You can see the paper in here is just shredded newspaper that kind of gets them going and rolling as far as uh, getting able to compost. All the stuff that looks like soil in here is actually worm poop. Um, it has a special fancy name called compost um, or uh, castings. And the castings can be used to put in plants, um, to use to water plants. It's a really, really good natural fertilizer. So we've talked a little bit about composting. We've talked about how we recycle um, and reduce here. We're going to go ahead and take a little walk back of house. You can see we're back behind our maintenance areas here at the zoo. And we're going to walk over to where we store all of our recycling products. So we do recycle everything we can here at the zoo. Our guest services crew does a wonderful job of having blue trash bags and those recycle containers that uh, go to recycling and then a black trash bag for those that uh, go to the landfill. That allows us to keep everything organized as we go. You can see some things maybe that you recognize. Right over there is one of our decorations for our Night of the Living Zoo. And right in front of me is a really interesting piece, besides the golf cart. Um, that's one of our well houses here at the zoo. Another thing that we can do to be conservation minded is that we have three wells here at Sedgwick County Zoo. And the majority of all of the water that we use for animals is well water. Um, this is a little bit better for the animals. It doesn't have some of the, um, the chloramides and chloride chlorines in it that uh, our city water does that are it's important for us uh, but not necessarily as beneficial for the animals. So right in front of me here is our maintenance building. This is where we have the department that helps keep the zoo uh, clean and safe and healthy. And then as I turn the corner here you can see our commissary. The commissary is like the zoo's Walmart. Everything we need we can order from commissary whether it be rakes and hoses uniforms or heads of lettuce. We can get everything from the commissary. Directly in front of me is what we call the tissues lab. If you remember the Facebook live that we did where um, we looked at the blood samples, that all happens here. And over to my left side is our Oliver Animal Hospital. Now we have three full-time vets here at Sedgwick County Zoo and they're kept very busy with everything that they do. So we're going to round the corner here by the commissary where you can see our recycle containers that we take all the recycling from the zoo and bring it over here and then Waste Connection picks it up on a regular basis. So for those of you that have uh, recycling at home, we follow the same policies here as you do at home. But there's a little bit more than we can do. We're going to turn the corner here and it's going to get dark for just a second. One of the things we do during special events is we make sure and have extra recycle bins set up throughout the zoo to make sure that it's easy for people to recycle. In fact, later on today, I will take a still picture of one of our brand new recycling landfill bins that actually has photos of things that you could purchase here at the zoo to help show you where those products could go. But we work with um, a variety of different companies to make sure we can recycle other things. We work with uh, Pro Kansas to be able to bring in our grain bags. So these are the different bags that our animal food comes in. And most of them are paper. We can go ahead and recycle those. Well, you can also see we recycle a variety of plastic bags that are over there. But one of my favorite things we do is there is a set of, bla of bags, these woven bags, that we cannot recycle. So our green team here at Sedgwick County Zoo came up with a very creative idea. 
they started making, and we have regular sewing parties, they started making these grain bag bags. So for $5 from the zoo, you can purchase one of these wonderful, very sturdy grain bags that you know then you're repurposing a bag that otherwise would go into the landfill. So there's a lot of ways we can be creative and figure out different ways to reduce our consumption, reuse those things that we can, and repurpose them whenever we, whenever we can find a new project for things. And again, here at Sedgwick County Zoo, with our green team's help, we're always looking for ways to make sure that we can have conservation as our number one priority. Now, many of you might have noticed on Facebook that we did post that we will be opening to the public on May 21st. We're excited about that and working hard to have everything prepared. If you are a member of Sedgwick County Zoo, you should have also received an email about several uh, special days just for members and what to expect there. We thank you all so much for all the support that you've given us over the last uh, six weeks or so, and we can't wait to start seeing you again here at Sedgwick County Zoo. Even though we're closed, we're still caring.